Hello my fellow Nightcrawlers, welcome to a brand new video. As usual, grab your blankets and grab your snacks to get comfortable because today we're going into the case, or more, the disturbing phone call of Ruth Price. And something that's very interesting about this phone call is that people are unsure on whether it's a real one or a fake one. And regardless, no matter which lens you look at this through, it's pretty terrifying no matter which way you slice it. I feel like I've done as much research as I can and even with all of that, it still leaves me a little skeptical. I don't really know which side to lean on because both sides seem to have good arguments in their favors. So to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm gonna put it in your hands. Once we reach the end of the video, let me know what you guys think. Hoax? Real? Let me know. Before we hop into the case though, I would like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. I know guys, it's our first sponsor. We made it, we made it. Atlas VPN is a service that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location while you browse the web. Not only do they care about your browsing safety, but they also care about whether or not your email has been compromised. With their data breach monitor, you can easily figure out if you've been busted. If this is already piquing your interest, make sure to check the description below or my pinned comment. It's a three year deal for only $1.39 a month and a 30 day money back guarantee. Look, I like Netflix and I know y'all like them too. I love binging movies into the ungodly hours of the night, but Netflix likes to restrict your ability to watch certain movies. This is where Atlas VPN comes in. Let's say I want to watch a Studio Ghibli movie, but they won't allow it in America. Lucky for you, Atlas VPN makes the process very simple. All you do is open the application, choose a location that you feel suits you best, and then boom. You're connected. It's really that simple. Now, as you can see, I can watch Studio Ghibli films without any worry. Currently, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount on the three year deal for just $1.39 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. This deal won't last for long, so make sure to check it out by clicking the link in the description or my pinned comment below. Now to the case. This one starts off in the place that we all consider safest, our home. This call opens up with a woman by the name of Ruth Price. Ruth reveals her name and starts saying her address before being cut off by the operator to inquire about the problem. She reports that some weird person is scoping out her house. The next bit of audio is very disturbing. You can skip this part of the video if needed. Yeah, Ruth? What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. Oh, well. He went in the back, I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy, and he comes to my door, and, yeah. and uh, said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. and where where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking this already. How could this even be remotely fake? How? In my opinion, that sounds about as real as it could get. I only became skeptical when I started looking into it a little bit further. Let's hop into the evidence on why this could potentially be real or potentially fake. Let's look into the skeptics though. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. How could this be fake? Kicking off the skeptics list, we start off with the idea that there has been no news articles or anything pertaining to this call. And trust me, I've done my fair digging as well. No major news publications have said anything about this, so that definitely does raise a few eyebrows, and I think that's a fair point. Secondly, the way the operator handles the call is awful. The operator cuts off Ruth when Ruth is trying to give her location. The operator doesn't ask the right questions according to people that have worked as operators. The operator doesn't attempt to try to get her location and says basically little to nothing as Ruth is presumably being murdered. The third one definitely varies state by state, so it's unclear 
what state this person was potentially murdered in. So this one could be valid, but it also in a way could not be valid. But let's look at it anyway. The third thing is that it's illegal to share any audio of a 911 call if it includes a person dying. Again, it varies state by state. So this is the one where I'm like, eh, a little shaky, a little shaky. The fourth one, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's the most damning, but it's definitely one that raises a few questions. It's when Ruth drops the phone, presumably, her voice is still very present. It's very loud, despite the fact that she dropped the phone after initially getting attacked. So if she dropped the phone, why was her voice still so loud, clear, you could understand everything? It definitely raises a few questions. And that kind of concludes the list on the potential skepticism that people have when approaching this phone call. And not even just that, I don't blame them for being a little skeptical because there is a lot of confusion around this case. I keep saying case, I'm, I don't think it's like a case. I think just phone call, phone call. One of the biggest points of confusion is that this supposedly is Ruth Price. This is the woman that's getting attacked in the call. Only thing is though, is that this is not Ruth Price at all. This is a person that died in 2015, but this image has been around for like ever. Everyone has basically referred to this person as the Ruth Price. As I mentioned before, this woman died in 2015. But the call has been circulating, at least brought up on the internet, since as early as 2002. And we'll get into the 2002 thing in a second, trust me. So, obviously, people are a little skeptical. I get it. They're raising a few eyebrows on a few of these things. But I feel like we've given the skeptics a bit of, a, a bit of time. Let's look into some potentially damning things that might make it real. Firstly, the oldest mention of this was in a forum post in 2002 called officer.com. A person with the name Handle C3 said this, I've heard this one before. This is the tape that has stuck with me these last few years. It has reminded me not to treat every call as routine. During my dispatcher class, our instructor pointed out how the dispatcher sounded disinterested in the lady's problem. Had she not cut her off from giving her address, the police may have been there sooner. So if this is on a form post from 2002, that basically means that this call is even older. So this might be a call from the 80s, the 90s. Another mentioning of the call is when a person in a Reddit thread said that they had also used this for dispatcher training. Now, could this be sheer coincidence? Sure, it might just be coincidence, but two different people years apart saying the exact same story? I don't know, man, I don't know. Secondly, there is a Ruth Price find a grave that seems to line up in which this call might have had happened. In my opinion though, I don't necessarily consider this one to be really damning. When you look at the find a grave itself, it says that this person died from an illness, not any brutal beating or stabbing or whatever the case may be. Third, her speech patterns feel very, very real. The way that she enunciates her words, the slight hesitations and tripping over herself sometimes as she speaks, it feels very natural. It doesn't feel like she's reading from a script. It feels like she's trying to describe her current situation. It doesn't seem like she's trying to recall to some of her lines on what to say. It feels like she's actually trying to describe her surroundings. This could just be solid acting, but this also could be very real. I don't know, it just, it feels very convincing, especially her scream in the call. Like, I don't know, th like, like that just sounded like pure, real, authentic terror. So with all of this in mind, what do you think? The way that she sounded in the call sounded like pure terror. It sounded like genuine terror. I don't know. I I think you can replicate some good like screams and whatnot, but hearing that just, I don't know, like that slight pause that she takes before she's, I, I'm pretty sure probably like killed in that. I don't know, it, ju it just sounds real. It sounds very real, but I'm always willing to hear things out. If you think it's fake, drop your reasoning in the comments and let's have, let's have some thoughtful discussion about it. 
Before we do hop into the end segment though, I would like to thank my knighted patrons. First, we got Alvaro, Bunny, Cleta, Catherine, Lint. Whoa, you changed your name. Magdalena? Magdalena, I think. Shizen, Steffi Muse, ya boy Cam. Thank you guys so much for your very generous and amazing support. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't, why not dislike and let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see y'all in the next one.